So I already made a lot of GPS tracker based projects in this channel, but this one is a little bit different as compared to all others. Well, this is a self charge GPS tracker in which you just need to insert the battery once and then it will automatically charge itself with the help of the solar panel and the solar energy charging IC built on this board. So in this video, I'm going to guide you about how to make your own GPS tracker based on T7000G board to do live location tracking over internet for absolutely free with without paying any single charge to any cloud platform because here in this project we are going to use the Adafruit IO Amcurity Broker. So this video got a lot of new things to learn so stick around and let's get started. This video is sponsored by LTM and they came up with an amazing product called as LTM 365. So LTM 365 is an electronics product design platform that unites PCB design, MCAD, data management and teamwork. So with LTM365, you can do the PCB designing task. You can share your projects over web for review purposes. It do cover sharing your PCB file to mechanical team so that they can create the mechanical product package based on your PCB. Then it also provides centralized cloud storage so you don't need to rely on one single computer for your files. It also helps you with managing your components and get real time supply chain data for your components. It also allows multiple people to work on single project. And in the end, it also helps you with sending your design to final manufacturing units. So LTM 365 takes care of all other tasks. So you put more time and effort in making something creative and useful. And the good part is you can try out its free version as well. I'll leave its free trial version link down in the description of this video. So do check that out. And now let us start with this video. So for making that project, I'll be using the T-SIM 7000G board, which I recently received from LilyGo. And I already made a detailed getting started video about it, in which I talked about different functionalities of this particular board and how to use it with the help of Arduino ID. I'll leave its video link down in the description of this video. So do check that out. Now, as this board has built in GPS, GPRS, battery charging circuit via solar panel compatibility. Well, the first project idea that came in my mind was to make a battery powered GPS tracker along with the solar charging compatibility. And well, don't make me wrong, uh, this not only works with the 2G GPRS connectivity, but it also works with the 4G NB-IoT connectivity as well. So in case you have the NB-IoT connectivity option, well, you can go for that as well with the same project. So let us start this project by sending the GPS coordinate data directly to the Adafruit IO server. And for that, let's first configure our Adafruit IO dashboard. So now for those who don't know what Adafruit IO is, then Adafruit IO is then cloud ambiguity broker that is available for free to use, but of course with some limitation. And I already used this platform quite a long time back with the help of the ESP devices to make my own home automation project. I'll leave the link of that video down in the description of this video in case you want to know in detail about this particular platform. Okay. Now, recently I came to know that this Adafruit IO ambiguity broker also provides the map widget to, you know, uh, track a location or uh, get the GPS coordinates and visualize it on the map widget. Okay. Uh, previously, I was thinking of to use the Blink IoT platform, but uh, in the new Blink uh, platform, the map widget is available inside the paid version only. And to use that widget, you need to pay somewhere around 619 INR Indian rupees to use that map widget. So I thought, why not to go for this Adafruit IO to use this feature for absolutely free. Okay. So first of all, you need to make an account on this platform. And after making the account, you just need to go on to the dashboard and here just click on the new dashboard in case there is no dashboard visible. In my case, I already have a welcome dashboard, which you all must be having. Okay. So here's our welcome dashboard. Now here, click on the setting icon and click on create new block. Now here we'll select this map widget. Okay. And now here we need to create a feed. Now feed is nothing but the topic in ambiguity protocol. Okay. So let us create a new feed for that. Just click here and type the name of the feed. I will write as GPS LOC that stands for GPS location. I'll press enter and it will create a new feed. So I'll select that feed and click on the next step. Okay. You can give the title of the block. So I'll name it as uh, location. You can give any name to this particular block. Okay. You can also choose how the map should look like, like a straight map or a high contrast map or a satellite imaginary. Okay. So I'll select the straight map for both my uh, light mode type and the dark mode type. Okay. 
click on create block and it will automatically create a block to have a map widget on your dashboard. Now along with the map widget, we'll also need one more widget to visualize the battery percentage. So yes, we are also sending the real time data of how much battery backup is still left in our GPS tracker. For that again, we'll click on this icon, click on create new block and this time we'll select the gauge widget and here I'll type the a uh, new feed name as battery i'll press enter i'll select this battery click on next step and block title will be again battery and its value will be from 0 to 100 okay now i'll click on create block and we have successfully created both the blocks now you can change the uh, size of the block and its layout by clicking uh, clicking on the edit layout button i can drag and drop it here i can drag it here and i can also resize this block by just dragging it from the corner okay so yeah so with this, we have successfully created the Adafruit MQT dashboard. Now let's just jump onto the code side and study how to write the code for our own GPS tracker. So here's the code for our SIM 7000G MQT tracker. And here you need to provide a couple of details to make this code work on your side as well. First of all, you need to provide the API name, which differs uh, from service provider. Okay. So here I've used the Vodafone idea SIM card. Hence I have written the API name as www. Well, you can easily get the API name of your network provider by just typing its name on Google and you'll easily get it. Okay. After that, you need to provide a couple of details for your MQT broker. So the MQT broker name is io.adafruit dot com it is a common name if you're using the data for mqt broker if you're using any other broker you have to type out the server name here after that here we have to provide the topics on which we need to publish the data okay now here in adafruit io there is one particular format of writing the topic first of all uh, it will be your username which in my case such an underscore sms in your case it may be different you can just click on this key icon and you find the username here so you need to type username slash feeds it will be remain same for your case slash the feed name that you have given so for gps it is gps loc for battery it is simple battery now here in the gps topic we have one more parameter called as forward slash csv so why is it so well uh, i got this particular term when i went through the documentation official documentation from adafruit which was about using the adafruit map widget okay and in that documentation uh, when i went to the code i found out that i need to write this forward slash csv to send the gps data to the adafruit io map widget let me take you to that code so yeah here it is so uh, username slash feeds slash location feed name forward slash csv if you don't write forward slash csv you won't be able to visualize the data on the map widget so that is a compulsory thing you need to write okay so make sure you change this uh, topic name or feed name according to your project after that what you need to do is you also need to make a couple of more changes let me guide you so here when you come to this line 167 here you need to provide the username and password or we can say the aio key of your mqt broker now you can get these details by going into the adafruit io dashboard click on the key icon then here is your username you just need to copy that and paste it here and here is your password or you can say aio key again you need to copy that and paste that here okay so these are the credentials to make successful communication with the mqt broker so so these are the parameters you need to enter to make this project work on your end as well. Now let me show you how the project is working and how it is sending the data. Okay. For that, we'll uh, go to the loop part directly because setup part is all about connecting to the uh, GPRS network and connecting to the MQT broker. These two things are done in the setup part. Everything is done in the loop part, like all other steps are done in the loop part. Let me uh, take you through the loop part. So in the loop, what we are doing is we are running the MQT logic, like all the MQT tasks are running in the background with the help of MQT dot loop topic uh, loop function. And here trans coordinate function is called, which is responsible for transmitting the coordinates. So if I show you this particular function, then you'll come to know more about it. So here's the trans coordinate function. So here, first of all, we are waiting till we get the latitude and longitude data. So the code is written in such a manner that until and unless we don't receive any coordinate, it will constantly be, you know, polling uh, our uh, SIM 7000G to get the uh, location data. And once we get the location data, then and then only the code will move ahead until and unless it will just asking for the GPS coordinates. So once we get the coordinate, what we are doing is we are creating a buffer called a send buffer in which we are storing four Four different values which is the speed value the latitude value the longitude value and the altitude value now this is again a mandatory format to 
send the data in adafruit io map widget particularly okay speed comma latitude comma longitude comma altitude this data went to send and then only we'll be able to visualize the location on the maps so we don't have any speed or altitude value so we have by default send uh, zero in both the cases like speed is zero and altitude is zero we are just sending the proper latitude and longitude data whatever we are getting from our sim 7000g okay so we are just sending it by a single command called as mqt.publish uh, we are publishing on GPS topic and the data to be published is nothing but the sand buffer. Along with the GPS coordinate, as I said, we are also mapping the uh, battery voltage or battery percentage, you can say, in which uh, and how we are doing it. We do have a ready function called as read battery, which I got from one of the built-in example code where it is just reading the battery voltage so it will uh, range from 3300 millivolt to 4200 millivolt ultimately 3.3 volt to 4.2 volt and what i did is uh, as soon as i get that data i'm just mapping that data in between 0 to 100 percent okay and i'm just sending the data to the battery topic by using the command mqt.publish so these two data we are publishing at a particular interval of time and that interval is let me tell you so so after sending the data, what we are doing is we are making our ESP board to go inside the deep sleep mode to save the battery. And until how many time it will go into sleep mode, where it is decided by the uh, variable called as time to sleep. So if I scroll uh, above, you will get that variable somewhere here on the line 61. So time to sleep is 120 seconds. That ultimately means two minutes. So after every two minutes, I am sending the new data. You can change this time according to your purpose, your project okay if you make it more like uh, if you make it 200 second it will be more time inside the sleep mode and it will save the battery okay it will increase your battery backup time okay but you'll be getting the data uh, after the 200 seconds of time period so it depends upon your project or application so after it uh, go inside sleep mode it will automatically wake up and restart whole process so this is all about how we are sending the data about the location and about the battery i hope you got the idea about how this code works we'll definitely providing this code into our github repository whose link is down in the description of this video but we will expect a big thumbs up against this code so we are providing it for free we are just wanting your likes and comments on this video so make sure you do click the like button and let me know in the comment section about how was this code and how was this project so yeah we are ready to upload this code and test this project so now i'll connect this sim 7000 g board with my laptop and after that i'll select the right board which is esp3 day module right com board which is already selected and i'll straight away hit the upload button so after uploading the code i'll first insert the sim card in it after sim card i'll insert the 18650 battery on the back now i'll turn on this device and put it near to the window so that it can get the location and here i have logged into my adafruit io account through my smartphone so after some times as you can see i got the data of both location and the battery percentage on the dashboard which is awesome and also we can attach a solar panel on the board to charge the battery as well so here we can use a solar panel up to 6 volt maximum and the charging through the solar panel is indicated by this red LED. Well this LED turns to green when the battery is completely charged. So our project seems working fine. Now let's just take this project on a long ride and see the results. So we are not only getting the location update, but it is also drawing a complete path of the device, which is great for tracking purpose. Now here one question arises, like how long the project lasts on a single charge of a battery? Well, I did some tests for that as well. So here I've inserted a fully charged 18650 battery, powered up the board, and as you can see, the light started blinking, which reveals that the board started working. This time, I also attached a solar panel with the board and in the end, I placed it near to the window and after some time, I received the first readings on 14th Feb 2.49pm with 100% battery percentage and also I received the location data as well. So I left that project for the whole day and on the next day when I came back to the studio, the lights on the board were turned off, only the solar panel charging IC light was turned on. And when I removed the battery and tested its voltage, then it was around 2.9 volt. So the battery was completely drained. 
And when I check the server for the last data, then I received the last data on 15th Feb 4 a.m. with 81% battery left. So that was a little confusing for me. Like with the 80% of the battery left, why the project stopped working? So on the same day, I decided to send the raw analog data of the battery directly to the server and let's just see what readings we are getting. So after changing the code and recharging the battery to 100% once again, I repeated those same steps and I put that device turned on near to the window, but this time without a solar panel. And on the next day, when I came back to the studio, again, the lights were turned off. And when I tested the battery voltage, it was again completely drained. And when I opened the laptop for the last data, well, it was on 16th Feb 3.22 AM with around 4.1 volt battery. Again, this was really very confusing. Like with 4.1 volt of data, the project should have been working, but ultimately it stopped working. So ultimately what I concluded was, it was the issue of the battery voltage formula that I got from one of the example code of the T-SIM 7000G board, which I'll try to fix later, but yeah, this is what I concluded. <laughs> but still with a single charge of battery and with two minutes of deep sleep time, I got a battery backup of 12 hours long without a solar panel attached, of course. And if I attach a solar panel, I got a battery backup of more than 13 hours. So I got more than one hour of extra battery backup with this small solar panel. And that too, it was exposed to the sun for only three hours in a day. So if you use a bigger solar panel and if you expose that solar panel uh, to the sun for longer period of time, you can expect way more, uh, you know, better battery backup time. Now here before ending the video, I want to let you know one issue which I faced while using this particular board. So uh, I have attached the solar panel with the board and also the battery was attached. So battery got drained off at 4 a.m. as I as I shown in the video. But at around 8 or 9 a.m. when the you know sun rises, the sun rays were falling on the panel. It was charging the battery, of course, but the board then turned on automatically. I need to press the power button or reset button to wake up that board or to turn on that board. So you require a manual press of a button even if it is charging via solar panel so this is an issue which i faced and this was the issue which i think i should let you know so that you can come to know about this thing while you know making this making use of this particular board so yeah that was the issue which i faced and i think it should be automatic like as soon as the battery gets charged up the board should get turned on automatically this should happen but it was not at all happening but yeah anyways that was our solar panel based gps tracking project made using sim 7000 g board I hope you like this project. I hope you got to learn something new from it. Do share your thoughts about this project down in the comments of the video. And yeah, subscribe to the channel for more such amazing projects. And yeah, that being said, I'm just ending this video here and now. Just wait for my next one in the next floor. Learn, share with me, Techie SMS.